All right, so uh, first off, everyone, welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by your friends here at Kativ Technologies. I'm Nigel Umbayek, uh, and I'm your host for today, one of the customer success managers here at Kativ, or closely with our presenter who's going to be helping us today, and that's Adam Evangelista. Um, and just to give everyone a little bit of background, um, Adam works on our customer success team as well, uh, primarily on the training as well as the support side. So more likely than not, if you've called into our Lifeline support channel before, um, odds are you've, you've probably spoken to Adam once or twice. Um, and so today, Adam's going to be going over some inventor tube and pipe. I know it's something that a lot of people have been asking for lately um, as one of the AVA topics they'd like to see. And uh, so if you don't know, Inventor has it, some tube and pipe functionality, which I'm sure Adam's going to kind of highlight and go over um, everything that that is. But if you do have a better professional, you do have this. And so uh, I would say 95% of the people who have Inventor already have tube and pipe. And so you can start using these things today. So I know that uh, Adam's been working really hard on this presentation. And if you do have any questions on uh, anything that we go over today, go ahead and type those into the chat panel and we'll go ahead and address those at the dedicated Q&A at the end. Uh, without further ado, Adam, do you have anything else to add before we get jump, jump into this? Yeah, let's get into it, man, no problem. Cool, take it away, Adam. All right, cool, thanks again. Good morning, everybody. It's about 10.04 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the West Coast in Southern California. It's kind of overcast today. It's pretty gray, which is the good news because last week was still scorching hot here in Southern California. But, you know, it's perfect weather to learn a bit about a tube and pipe over here and invent a professional, shall we? Next slide. All right. The agenda for today, right? We're going to do, uh, do some quick introductions like we just saw. I'm going to talk a bit more about myself, believe it or not. Um, we're going to do a bit of a tube and pipe overview just to kind of talk about the context of this particular environment, especially in relation to the rest of the software and possibly the rest of your workflows. Um, but most of today will be about the demonstration of the product itself. And so a few key points that I want to touch before we leave here, file configurations, right? So how do you even set up tube and pipe to begin with? What do the folders produce, names, whatever? Um, styles, tube and pipe styles is going to be a huge thing. You're going to absolutely need that set up before you do anything else. We're going to talk about sketching routes and making sure that we can actually place routes as we intend to, and also populating the components as well to produce a finished route. Okay. Um, there's a lot to talk about inside of tube and pipe, and so this is going to be a very high level, very, um, very kind of abstract conversation for the most part. I guess uh, that said, uh, any questions so far? You guys doing all right? Uh, any curiosities? Um, again, I know this uh, tube and pipe has been a kind of requested topic up until now. So hoping I'll be able to do this topic justice and just let me know if you guys want to hear more. Okay. Um, that said, uh, you guys did show up for AVA today, which is the Autodesk Virtual Academy, but we're about to go into the warp zone right here. Okay, we're going to learn all about tubes and pipes and what, what better mascot than Mario himself, huh? Let's go on. What's the next slide? <laughs> Introductions. My name's Adam. I'm an application engineer at Kativ Technologies. Uh, Kativ, if you're not familiar with, um, oh, having trouble hearing Adam. Okay. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure. I think you sound okay, Adam. So right on. Okay. Now let me know. Yeah, as I. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> okay. So yeah, again, I'm an application engineer at Kativ Technologies. Kativ does, uh, of course, a bunch of application sales, right? So Autodesk and Ansys Software, particularly. Um, and both of those companies produce a good variety of software and applications specifically. And to help with those particular softwares, we have application engineers like myself. Okay. And so we end up wearing a lot of hats since there are so many different products under both of those umbrellas. So like Nigel said, I do a lot of the lifeline support over here. I do some of the training. I know Inventor, I know AutoCAD, I know Vault. Um, and so I think one of the main strengths of, yeah, absolutely, right on. Um, and so um, I think one of the main strengths of the Autodesk products in general is just that they are kind of a conglomerate platform of a bunch of interconnected software, essentially. So if you pick one up, it interacts with a bunch of other software really easily. Um, Vault Inventor, for example, is a really common one as well. And I'll try to touch on that as we go through this presentation as well. So uh, let me know if you guys want to know more about that, of course. Okay. And then uh, just a bit of history about my background as well. Um, my previous job, what I used to do, I used to work at a makerspace over in Los Alamitos in Southern California, if you're familiar with the area. Um, and then, you know, Makerspace is just a big community run fabrication shop with like CNC machines, uh, mills, lathes, 
uh, laser cutters, 3D printers and all that stuff. And people would come in and we teach classes and consult on projects and stuff like that. So, you know, I made a lot of things back then. I think we're still making a lot of things now. And so, um, you know, just let me, let me know if you guys want to know more about that. So moving right on along. Next slide, tube and pipe overview. So again, I'm assuming you guys, uh, the very high level tube and pipe, right? What is going on here exactly? It's all about routing pipes, of course, naturally. Um, and as far as that goes, right, tube and pipe, it covers a pretty good variety of uh, industries and um, types of work, right? Talking about any kind of like process design, if you're doing like any kind of fluids or foods, for example, you're gonna have to get um, one type of fluid from this location to another location. You're talking water, you're talking oil, you're talking plant. I know um, some people at the company, we work with like a lot of like boiler and uh, water tank companies, for example. Um, anything that you have to connect from one point to another using standardized parts, right? And, uh, I'm sure we have, a, just looking at the list here, I know we already have a variety of different industries uh, present here right now. Um, but really, tube and pipe applies for uh, routing any kind of point to point using industry standard piping components, right? And that's going to be kind of the main takeaway is that there are standards and there are components that you can then put into Inventor and you could use it to uh, route these routes as you need to, right? Um, that said, the whole reason tube and pipe exists is that yes, it is very possible to do tube and pipe routing outside of tube and pipe specifically. Right? You could 3D model. Um, in fact, I was talking to a relatively large company just recently, this last week. They weren't using tube and pipe yet, but what they were doing on this very large assembly was simply in the assembly environment, they would start a new component and they would use the sketch plane from the previous part to uh, draw the sketch and extrude the pipe all the way to the next point that they needed. Right, it's possible and you could absolutely do it and then wrestle with the 3D sketches if you want to, but it's gonna be much easier in tube and pipe. And so uh, it's a whole dedicated environment to making this whole routing and assembly of these tube and pipe components as easy as possible, right? Um, that said, it is, a, um, it, is a, it is a dedicated environment. And so a lot of the stuff I'm gonna be talking about, it's gonna be very much about how to use the particular software itself and like what it expects from you. Right. If you try to do something outside of that range, then it becomes a bit more complicated naturally. But um, what I want to present to you guys today is kind of like an ideal situation of what you would expect to work and the different parts that you need to be aware of if you're going to start configuring this for yourself. Okay. Um, and a few other uh, disclaimers before we start as well. Uh, Tube and Pipe is heavily dependent on Content Center as well. And so um, oftentimes people already have custom content centers or any kind of configured content center already that they want. Um, there's often a extra bit of work associated with authoring these parts so that they fit into the tube and pipe categories naturally so that you could actually use them. Um, there is some dedicated resources we have for customizing content center and the like as well. I'm going to try to use as much default as I can in today's presentation, but um, I'll call that out as we come across it. Okay. And so um, yeah, just a heads up. And then there's a few other things in the program uh, for versions and stuff that we should be aware of as well moving forward. Um, do you have any questions so far, though? Does that uh, make sense? I hope that's, uh, I hope that tracks with everyone for kind of, you know, why you guys are here for tube and pipe in the first place. Um, it's very much meant to replace the kind of manual process of routing this stuff and assembling this stuff uh, like normal. So um, it does require a good bit of configuration, though. So um, any questions or concerns so far, though? Okay. I don't see anything yet, Adam. Gotcha. Uh, we can just continue moving. Gotcha. Okay. So let's go on into the demo then, shall we? Okay. Um, okay. So I have this nice little data set. Um, this is from Cameron Witten at our company, and he's very good at his presentation. I really like his data sets a lot. Um, so to start, I just kind of wanted to just kind of show what like a, you know, a terminal uh, tube and pipe assembly would end up looking like, right? So I'm gonna start over here. It's gonna collapse all children. You can see over here, right? We have a regular, I think this is like a boy, like a wall tank or something like that specifically. Um, but you can see here, um, there's a few pipe runs on the screen, right? There is, if you look at the feature tree specifically, we have the assembly in the back over there. Uh, this assembly is just the tank wall along with these individual nozzles placed in various places, right? Um, you will typically need some kind of geometry to start working with tube and pipe, right, as reference, right? That's where the, all these flange attachment points are, for example. Um, 
And I, I could talk a bit about best practice in that regard as well. But we also have a sensor block over here, and then we have an air unit over here. And you can see there's also a variety of different pipe styles that we could end up using as well, from just regular straight PVC pipes to even these like routed hoses and stuff like that. Okay. Um, when you do a tube and pipe assembly, right? The way tube and pipe works, um, if you guys don't have access to it already, it's going to be under your environments specifically. And if you've installed Inventor Professional correctly, it should be showing up here as tube and pipe right here. Um, if you guys don't have that, you may have to go to add-ons and this add-on manager will show you where all of the different um, add-ons are going to be loaded or not, right? For tube and pipe in particular, we're looking at routed systems, tube and pipe right here. Um, should be there by default for the most part, unless something went terribly wrong. But <laughs> just let us know if that's the problem, because that's, that's an easy fix as well, right? And so, um, yeah, in terms of managing tube and pipe, especially for the file structure, right? The first thing you're going to do, you're going to just go and start tube and pipe, right? And it's going to ask you to start uh, make, running, uh, start creating runs and stuff. But I, I do want to take a look at the folder structure underneath here specifically, right? So if I mouse over the tube and pipe run 00 right here, you can see that all of my routes get highlighted together. This effectively just acts as a single sub-assembly inside of your main assembly right here, right? So tube and pipe assemblies don't typically exist or are meant to kind of exist outside of the main assembly, essentially. It's just going to always exist under a larger assembly. Okay? And this particular package right here, this is going to have more sub-assemblies where it has dedicated routes underneath it. So this one's overflow, this one's the balance, this one's outlet, this is a sensor tube, this is an air hose, this is an inlet, all right? Those are all different routes under the main tube and pipe assembly, right? And that's an inventor side thing, right? Um, the first question you might be asking, it's like, Adam, like how the heck am I supposed to divide up all my different runs and routes and whatnot? Um, the answer is it typically depends, right? Um, what I've been told is that maybe you'd want to uh, specifically divide up these different routes according to your bill of materials. Um, the reason I mentioned that is because once I go into these individual routes, these are actually individual files as well. And so if I click on overflow, right click open specifically, right, this becomes an assembly file that I could use and route uh, for everything else over here, right? So this becomes a whole dedicated um, assembly for down the line. Um, question. FYI, tube and pipe, um, better for relatively small to medium-sized projects, not an entire plant. Fair enough. Thank you, Javier. <laughs> and uh, we also have, uh, for example, Plant 3D, which is also um, fairly similar to this sort of thing as well. Um, but thanks for that, Javier. Um, no problem. <laughs> Thank you, Javier. Javier just wrote, you don't have to read this immediately. Thank you, though. <laughs> um, Okay, <laughs> got you. Thank you, Avi. Um, okay, and so I'm just closing out these assemblies. And so, again, I just want to highlight this um, particular kind of structure of the model browser because I, I always found that a bit confusing myself. So the subassembly exists as itself, and that's going to kind of be a wrapper for all the individual um, routes that you end up running. You end up looking over here, and these are all the individual routes, and these will be the individual assemblies that you could then place into your um, drawing, for example, down the line. Um, can you have, um, and uh, yeah, and then you can open up these guys and you can see uh, specifically what composes each of these sub-assemblies from here, right? Um, I'm gonna be using some of these terms interchangeably, but this particular level that I have highlighted, this is a particular run uh, under the tube and pipe sub-assembly. And then under the run, uh, under the run, we have the routes as well, which is gonna be the actual skeletal model that we'll be looking at. Um, but from here, then you can see the individual uh, tube and pipe flanges and all the different components as you scroll down here. And this is also ordered chronologically as well. So just to give you an idea of what um, is actually outputting from these particular tube and pipe assemblies, okay? Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And so, yeah, just something, just something to be aware of, right? And so that, that folder structure is, is there and it is pretty editable as well. Um, new in 2021, there are a few extra things here as well to be aware of. Um, under file, um, you do have options over here. And if you go to the file tab specifically, um, I believe this is new for 2021 specifically, but there is file naming defaults. Um, so there's like frame generator, which you may have seen before. And there's also tube and pipe over here where you could go through and uh, adjust some of the naming conventions over here. Um, in, in all honesty, I haven't uh, messed with this too much. I know it's a very common request to have a bit more control over the naming conventions of the individual components, files, and all that different stuff. And you can see the display name on the left and the actual file name result on the right. Um, and 
yeah, if, you, if you've ever been messing with this, it, you'll notice there's not really a, a confirm button over here. And so if you want to save changes, you have to press enter specifically. Um, but for example, if you wanted to name your assembly something particular, you could add in an assembly name, unique number, index number, date, some of these extra properties over here. Um, I'd be curious to know if there was a, a bit more granularity to adding, you know, maybe conjoining with vaults numbering schemes or something like that. But if you want extra control over your file naming defaults, there is some new functionality in 2021, which um, we could touch on maybe at a future time. But um, that's what we're looking at over here. Okay. Uh, and just to demonstrate, right, we could, I don't know, well, I, won't, I won't mess with that yet. So, okay. And so again, yeah, you could think of tube and pipe as a, just a big sub assembly in your regular assembly, right? And that's what this big folder structure looks like, even though it has a bunch of different uh, icons and stuff like that. So just, you know, don't get, don't get too, too be afraid. Hmm. Um, and so we'll see. Okay, does that, does that make sense so far? Yeah, that, that's just uh, kind of just to understand what, what comes out of the model browser specifically, because I think this could be kind of overwhelming to, to new people for sure. Um, but that's typically what the file structure will end up doing. And so what we're gonna do from here, we're gonna go ahead and go into a new tube and pipe assembly so that we can you know, see what it looks like from scratch specifically right here. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and do that unless there's any other questions here. Uh, we got one from Ravi, how to copy tubing from one assembly to another without link so that you can edit tubing assembly. Not content letter, getting the download it. It's a good question. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we could come back to that, Ravi. I'm not sure about those answers, but um, yeah, let me come back to that uh, later in the presentation, okay? Um, okay. So I'm going to start a new assembly here really quickly. Um, nothing special about the assembly, right? I'm just going to open up a regular standard default template right here. Um, and I'm using just this regular um, tank wall weldment assembly right here, uh, just because it has geometry already. So under designs, tank wall, I have a, I'll just do the weldment for now. It's fine. And again, this tube and pipe assembly, this all starts as a regular assembly, right? I'm just pulling in my parts. I just placed it grounded at origin and having a good time. You know, maybe I changed my view style so that we can see some edges clearer. Fine. Um, but now to go ahead and start tube and pipe, all we got to do from here is simply go over to environments, right? And go ahead and click on tube and pipe. Um, you do need to be saved first. So, you know, don't forget that. Go ahead and click OK. We'll call this AVA October. There we go. And you're gonna get some other notifications about saving, right? Go ahead and click okay, yes please. And when you first start these routes, you usually be prompted with some kind of a naming prompt right here. So this is asking us for the top level tube and pipe naming scheme right here and also the run name. It's gonna start a run for us automatically. Um, and yeah, I, I suppose it's, it's pretty recommended to um, you know, keep track of what you actually wanted to name it as, right? Again, this is pulling in some of the uh, file name defaults that we looked at from application options right here. Um, and you can determine where it's gonna be saved to specifically, right? Um, yeah, bear in mind, this is, uh, again, all just kind of a big wrapper and this is all gonna be kind of driven by your project file to find and resolve files. So you can go ahead and place your folders as you need them to. Um, I'm gonna be using the default locations for now, so nothing too crazy. This is just on my desktop, tube and pipe, totally fine. AVA October test run file name, right? And I'll just call this like run one, for example, for now, okay? And from there, it's gonna produce, again, the top level sub assembly over there. And it's also gonna produce a run automatically. Again, those are two levels. So it did two levels at the same time. So just that's part of what's happening right there. I'm gonna actually uh, double click back on the hello world ASCII over here just to demonstrate what's going on. Um, this works really similar to like the part assembly levels that you see inside of uh, the regular assembly environment where you double click a particular context to start editing in that context, right? And so, um, for example, I have the top one over there and then I have the run specifically over here. And from here, um, I'm gonna, I could either place a component or I could start sketching my route. And those are gonna be the two main components over there, okay? Oh, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm, yeah, I'm sorry to Brittany. Um, you're asking, could you review where you found the tank wall assembly? This is actually a, a, a custom data set that I got from one of our uh, colleagues over here, actually. Um, I, I could probably make this available um, after the presentation as well. I don't think you would have a problem with that. Um, but yeah, this isn't a, this isn't a sample inside of, a, in, inside of Inventor by default. 
Uh, my apologies about that. And so uh, once I get past that, right, I have this particular run active and I can start editing this run. There's two things we could do. Again, you could either place a component or we could just start routing an actual path for this run. Okay. And so um, particularly, right, and the first thing I want to do and uh, myself, I want to go ahead and place a flange here. You can see that the component in the back already turned into this kind of a shaded a clear one over here. So we can go ahead and uh, use those geometry references to inform the rest of our placements. So I'm going to start this particular route by simply just placing a component, right? And so in this case, um, this is actually going to be, um, I'm going to come down over here to my flanges. And we are going to pull in. This is another custom part as well, actually. And so, um, like I mentioned before, um, typically there's going to be a lot of like upfront configuration for tube and pipes. Um, you could pretty much use any of these as long as they have the right size member that you need in particular. Um, this is just a, a custom content center part that we had produced, and I published it to the content center so that it could uh, be a bit cleaner and just a bit simpler and readable for us in particular. Um, a big complaint we get a lot right off the bat is simply. Um, the default descriptions, the default properties and naming schemes for the content center parts don't have enough information per se, or it's not organized in the way that you want. And so that's another benefit of configuring your own custom content is that you could configure with the way the uh, descriptions and other information comes through, right? So for example, this is a flange class 150 PVC socket and the description, you know, it's, it's going to be class, uh, it's going to be flange class material diameter and a socket type right there. And that gives us a bit more information, right? Uh, but again, this is a custom piece of content center, but most any of these should work for what we're about to do anyhow. Um, and so yeah, I'm going to place this like I would a normal content center part. It's going to give me the uh, key table for the content center over here. Um, I know these flanges are going to be uh, two inches in diameter specifically in the nominal. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and right click connect fitting if I want to actually place it on the geometry. Once you right click and press connect fitting, you're going to get this nice little arrow over here that's going to help you determine the direction and interface of your part specifically. Right, and you can press space to move it around and reverse it, of course. And when I go ahead and hover over the geometry in the back, you'll notice that it's going to try to um, snap and move towards that geometry, right? Uh, part of this interfacing and part of the orientation and connection points, that's all also done in the configuration and authoring of these parts, which is, uh, again, something I'm not going to cover here, but uh, most of the default parts inside of Inventor for tube and pipe should already have authoring that will allow you to see these connection points like you're seeing right now. Okay. And so uh, I'm just going to place the flange. Um, and all you need to do is select a piece of geometry, usually something round. You could press spacebar to reverse the direction so that it's actually you know, facing the direction that you want it to. Um, and right here, I'm making sure I'm placing it on the front edge over here and not the back edge, for example. Okay, You might have to use a bit of um, finesse over there to get it in there, just like so. And once you click, it's going to place and it's going to center it and it's going to you could adjust the rotation over here if you want as well, but um, I'm just going to right click and click done from there. That's going to be my first component, right? And again, inside of my inside of my route, I've placed a component. I'm sorry, inside of my run, I've placed a component right here, and this is going to be the start of my route that I could use now. And so now that if I want to actually run the kind of skeleton sketch out of here, I'm going to go ahead and press new route. It's going to ask me to name it because we have to name this, of course, and I could just call this, you know, again, whatever you want from here, but, you know, probably best to follow some kind of naming convention. I'm just going to call this, you know, route one. Route one. Go ahead and click OK. And from there, it's going to give you another different dialog box, uh, another panel up here, right? And so it's going to also highlight the specific section down here. And so now we're editing a route specifically. And the route's going to have a different set of tools up here. Um, probably a big thing to be aware of is the actual route button, the include geometry, and some of the constraints that are available over here as well. Okay. Um, and so to start this route, all I have to do is click route. And uh, this is also fairly new in 2021, as I understand these like dialog boxes. And so I, I don't think this will be one-to-one um, -one exactly what you see in a previous version like 2020 or 2019. Uh, most of the functionality should be preserved though. Okay. So once I click new routes, um, it's gonna kind of prompt me for where I wanna start this route because I haven't really selected where I'm gonna start this route yet. 
Okay, and you'll notice that my flange has also kind of disappeared into that kind of ghost version right there. Um, but I could still pull the geometry off of it, um, again, dependent on some of the authoring of that part. Um, but you can see the connection point for this particular flange, it's already set at that particular point. And so if I want to start the route at that connection point, all I have to do is hover around that section, like so, go ahead and click once, and that's going to be the beginning of my route. Okay. Now I have a few more options for what's about to happen over here, but we do just have one axis right now, so let's see what that means. Um, you could click anywhere along this axis right now if you'd like to, and that will set the particular distance. Right? And you could also type in a dimension, you know, if you want to do like just 10 inches, um, you just start typing for this specifically. Um, kind of odd, but um, you could just start typing your distance in there, like 10, and it'll automatically fill in a line with some dimensions and also an endpoint with some other um, ends you could start routing off of in addition. Okay. Um, and, and so I guess there's a lot there on screen, isn't there? <laughs> so it's, it's a, just a line so far, right? There's nothing too crazy about this. There is a dimension up top that you can edit directly if you'd like to. So um, if I want to go back in here, I can just close out of that window. I could go in here. Instead of 10 inches, we're going to go to 8 inches. And it's just going to update the line accordingly. This is, for all intents and purposes, just a regular sketch so far, right? And if I want to go back to edit the sketch at this point, right, if I go ahead and click route, um, it'll initiate the route command one more time, but you'll notice that I could still, um, inside of the route umbrella, I could start um, working off of this endpoint and get back to this dialog where I see all these options over here. You know, all these different lines are different axes where you could go, right? So if you don't want to go straight forward, if you want to go left, right, up, down, um, you could also run an angle here as well if you just want to rotate it like so. Um, and you also have these uh, arrows over here if you want to do like a, like a 45 uh, angle split in one direction or the other. Okay. And again, this kind of corresponds with the styles that we saw earlier, where um, I haven't talked too much about styles yet, but um, yeah, you could do 45 degree bends if you want to, uh, but for now we're just sketching this as it is right now. Okay. And so I'm just going to go ahead and add another bend right here. So we're going to go off this point and we're just going to go down. I'm going to mouse over that bottom axis right here. And um, actually, it doesn't extend all the way down the distance I need it to. So I just leave my mouse there. I can go ahead and put in a dimension like 50 inches, press enter. It's going to draw me a line like so. Okay, looks pretty good. Still straight, still straight. Okay. And from here, you know, we'll just put one more extension on the end over here as well. We'll do another eight inches that away. I can go ahead and press OK. And we're looking pretty good. Okay. Um, at this point, um, there, there's a small branch in the functionality of 2021 in particular. Um, 2021 has a bunch of extra sketch modifiers that you could put onto the sketch so that you could actually adjust this and uh, constrain it. Uh, normally what happens at this point is that people would typically in the past would apply constraints so that these are fully locked in. This is still a sketch and so we're still very interested in actually constraining all this stuff and making sure it plays nicely with everything. Um, but in this case, right, these are um, dimensioned uh, linearly, but this could still rotate and move around, which, you know, not probably not ideal, right? And so what you could do from here, what people have done in the past, right, you could go ahead and just constrain these particular lines to a good reference, right? Uh, if I try to constrain this right now, it's not really anything in the background I could constrain to, so I would end up using this include geometry function over here. Um, and I could pull in some of my origin planes so that I could help um, constrain this a little bit. Those are kind of small. I'll use the main origin ones over here instead. All right. And now what you would want to do, you'd still want to go through the extra trouble of constraining this line so that it's parallel with this line. And now we're all locked in and that's a proper sketch that we could end up using. Okay. Um, and I, I guess before I go much further, let me talk about tube and pipe styles, right? Because I, I didn't actually change my style before I did this. And so that uh, might be a bit problematic. If I click tube and pipe styles, right? Um, these are going to be some of the default styles that are just associated with the program right off the bat. Um, you have, again, a variety of standards available, ASME, ANSI, um, ASTM, DIN, ISO. Um, and the style is essentially going to determine what pool of parts it's going to be using to populate this route in the background over here, right? So right now, I currently have this ASME B36 highlighted and active. Um, it's going to be calling in these four content center families right over here, right? And again, you could take a look at the family name to get a bit more information about what's in that family in particular. 
Um, but essentially, there's going to be four types of parts that could be used in this route to populate it, right? There's the actual straight pipe section, there's the coupling section, there's going to be elbows of 90 degrees and 45 degrees. And these are all going to refer to that content center family to pull in a particular size part that they need. Okay. Um, the actual size and key parameters that you might be interested in at that point, of course, are going to be the diameter and schedule specifically. And so that's the other thing that these style controls is what diameter and schedule they're going to pull from this content center family as well. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've talked to a variety of people on the team as well. And um, I know, I know typically one of the first steps when you get into tube and pipe is you're going to just want to make your own style. You just want more control over that. These are fine, of course, as defaults, um, but it's pretty easy to make a new custom style at this point as well. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure about that one, Rodney, actually. Um, let, let me demonstrate what I can do really quickly with this, um, with these custom styles really quick, just to see what it looks like, right? And so uh, for this particular one, I'm going to be using some of the PVC styles right here. And uh, just for the you know sake of posterity, I'm just going to right click, I'm going to copy this out. And we're going to go ahead and double click to activate this, right? And uh, I kind of misspoke there. I, I double click so I could begin editing this. You'll notice that ASME is still highlighted in bold. That means that's the active style for this particular route so far. Um, so that's actually another command. I could set this to active. So this is going to be my new active one. No big deal. Double click to edit so I could actually make edits to the name and stuff. So I'll go ahead and name this something you know appropriate that I would want. So like you know this would be like um, uh, PVC two inch um, two inch, and we'll call this schedule eighty. So I'll schedule 80. Um, and from here, right, this is again just going to be a selection of different couplings. And depending on the type of style that you're choosing, right, if you want to do like butt welded, for example, it's going to have different fitting requirements at this point, right? So it has pipe elbow and it doesn't care about coupling, for example, because if you're butt welding pipes together, you don't need a coupling, right? Same thing you'll see for like flange, for example, you'll get some other options. Um, there is an optional style, so you don't have to specify flange and you don't um, for when you do a flange like over here. And then, um, I'm sorry, I, I got that mixed up. The flange is required for the flange style, but then gasket, gasket isn't necessarily required for this either. And so as far as uh, setting the components that you want in this particular style, um, I, I believe you're going to be restricted to what's available on these options over here specifically. So I'm not sure if you could add in a, a a T fitting requirement over here, for example, under uh, just the default non check. Um, but I'm not sure. I'll double check. <laughs> um, and so from here, right, we, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Is that all we wanted? Components optional. Okay. And so, um, yeah, all, all I've done so far, I've just uh, I've edited this copy of the style over here. I have a new name. Um, you can also set a category as well if you want to set like an extra folder for yourself, right? So, like if I do like PVC two inch, for example, that's going to save it to a separate folder. Um, and I could specify all the components over here. But in this case, uh, I do want a two inch diameter and I want to make sure I'm pulling in the uh, schedule 80 components from these families as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click save. A few things are going to happen. There you go. And so you see now I have a category here, PVC2, which represents a folder under my styles. And now I have my PVC2 inch schedule 80 families and uh, family of parts that I could use to populate a particular route that I'm interested in. Okay. And so before I leave, I'm just going to make sure that I'm, I'm bolded over here. I'm activated, looking good. I'm going to go ahead and close this now. And um, this route is going to use the PVC2 inch schedule 80 style that I just set up right there. Okay. Um, from here, um, anything else I want to do? I think we're looking pretty good. Finish route. And from here, um, I'm going to go ahead and click populate route. Should pull in those components as I want them to. And again, using that style that I had selected for that route. And it's going to pull in uh, all of these different parts and automatically populate the rest of this run, right? So again, we started with that flange that we placed manually. That was just a manual place component. We did a route, which represents the actual path of the pipe. Um, and then we use the populate button right here to pull in the individual pipe segments that are going to be um, called out using the styles that we just configured. Okay. Um, and so, and so, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of a, yeah. And so that, that's kind of the typical workflow that you're going to be looking for. Obviously, these component, these routes could get a bit more complicated. Um, and I think we'll do one more before we, um, before we leave for here. Um,
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so and then a few other questions from uh, Samuel. If you move one of the flanges, the routing will follow the change. Correct. Yeah. And so that's essentially constrained to the flange itself. And um, I, I might be able to do the auto route example next, actually, because we could see that a bit more explicitly there, too. Um, now, there's another question from Andrew. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a good sanitary tubing content. I'm not sure. Um, I'll, I'll double check when we get to the Q&A section. We'll see. Um, okay. And so there's that. And uh, let me just say, I, I am, let me call up my particular version right now, because there was like a relatively interesting functionality change from the 2020 RTM version. So I'm, I'm on 2021.0.1 right now. If you are on 2020.1 and above, um, your actual sketching is going to be a bit different. 2021.1 um, has it so that when you start your routes um, and you start routing things, it's gonna automatically populate your sketch as you go. So when I did my route just now, um, uh, when, I, when I made my route just now, for example, um, I, I had the individual sketch and it just showed up as is, but if you're using a newer version of 2021, this is actually gonna auto populate as you draw. And so um, I believe that's designed as intended, but I mean, let me know if you're having issues with that because um, I'm not sure if that's something they plan to um, either fix. It seems intentional to me, but um, yeah, this is specifically what you see before you update the 2021.1. <laughs> um, so just a heads up over there, okay? And okay, and I, I didn't touch on it just there as well, but um, when I, when I edited this original route, um, I, I had manually started putting in those constraints to constrain that sketch as we needed it to be. Um, but you'll notice inside of this dialog box, which again, I think believe is new for 2021 specifically, you actually have these auto constraint options over here as well. And so if I go ahead and start routing off of this, you can see there's a few toggle, toggle, <laughs> toggles, there's a few toggles for the different auto constraints you could apply. For example, by default, it's going to always try to meet parallel, perpendicular, and collinear constraints as you move around over here. Um, same thing, though, right? We could also do toggle on the parallel x, y, and z axes for all of our stuff as well. And that's going to automatically place and constrain our pieces as we need them to be. Okay. Same thing with the plane, uh, planes as well, if you want to constrain it to plane specifically. Okay. Um, and so, and so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just a heads up. And I believe that's also, again, new with the 2021 version is this dialog box with these auto constraint toggles specifically. So um, you pretty much have your options, whether you want to constrain it after the fact or during the actual placement of these individual parts. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see, how are we doing on time, Nigel? We're at 1040 right here. Um, okay. Let me do, okay. Well, let me, let me see if we got any, can you demonstrate copy design? I have this one over here and I want to, oh, I say, um, I'm not sure about the copy design one myself, Claudio. Um, I don't have yeah, Claudio, oh, go ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. Yeah, Claudio, um, if you want to see something specific, I know that Adam has a canned presentation here and we don't have enough time to like kind of divert from that. If you want to see something specific and you're not seeing it today, definitely reach out to um, someone here at the Kativ team, like via email or something, and then we'll get that squared away for you. Yep. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, I think, let's see, I think we have maybe enough time to, well, I do want to talk a bit about some of the other components really quick. So uh, this is pretty basic run, right? This is just a few bends at 90 degrees, no big deal. Um, there's obviously a bit more functionality you're probably interested in, right? Um, for example, like, you know, how do you do this kind of conjoining path over here? It's uh, not that straightforward, unfortunately. And then you also have these guys for the auto routes. Um, so let me, let me do let me do this one i'll do this black route right here uh, really quickly just so we can see what that entails right and so from here right i'm done with this particular um, route and so i'm going to leave this route i'm going to finish this route and uh, i'm going to finish this run and i'm going to go ahead and go back into my top level sub assembly for the tube and pipe i'm going to create a new run and i'm just going to say this will be um i don't know i'll say this is the run two Right, this is going to be run two. And so from here, um, I want to do this particular one that we saw over here, this black one. Um, and it's kind of interesting just because um, this has two, uh, two starting points, essentially, and it's going to have to be made into one. And so the way that we do that using tube and pipe is a bit, um, a bit unexpected, perhaps. But um, I'm going to need a few things. So 
I'm going to place my, one of my flanges over here. These are actually three inch flanges over here. Um, and so if I want to go ahead and get the three inch right here, right click, connect fitting, go ahead and place that, right click, continue. And I could keep placing them again over here. Right, and this is going to be two points. I'm going to be done with that. And I, again, notice that when I have my route populated, those are the two first placements that I'm going to be doing. And if I wanted these to simply um, kind of line up with each other, all I got to do is start routing now. I'll go ahead and start a route. I'm going to clear that out, start a route like so. And so what you want to do to actually get these routes to join together is that we're going to have to make these two separate routes under this particular run. Okay. And so first of all, right, I'm going to start this run over here, pull it out just like so. I'm going to pull it forward in a nice little S fashion, like so. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about constraining right now. Um, if I were to finish this route right now, um, I could go ahead and finish it, and I could even uh, populate this if I wanted to. Um, it's going to give me these regular elbow bends, which isn't ideal because I want a T fitting there, right? And you might be thinking, well, okay, well, Adam, why don't you just draw another route from this guy over here? Um, and we can do that, except. Uh, I'm going to do the point one over there. There we go. And I'm going to snap it to that particular location. And if I do conjoin the routes like this, right, you're going to see that it doesn't quite populate like we need it to, right? In this case, it's just kind of trying to figure itself out. So that's not really what we want to do. Um, what we want to do instead, however, I'm going to undo this part of the route, finish route. Once we populate it, right, we do have a finished tube and pipe run. Um, I'm sorry, am I under the right style? I think we're okay. Populate routes, please. Um, route two. There we go. Um, there we go. So once we get to this point, right? If you want to sub in a, a T a T fitting, for example, you could still treat this as like similar to regular content center, for example. And so I'm going to replace from content center right here. Um, in this case, I'm going to go find a three inch PVC T fitting somewhere, like so. Right. This guy right here, this ASTMD, right? And again, like all the material choices and stuff, that's driven partly by the standards, of course, that were already developed there. But this is also based on the content center itself and how you configured the content center. So that's why we're that's you know I went to this because ASTM has PVC. So I'm going to go ahead and swap this in. It's going to tell you it's going to try to maintain all the connections that it has. Go ahead and click OK, and uh, it's going to do its best to fit in over there. One thing I haven't done is change the style so that it's actually going to be three inches because right now I'm still in two. And so I'm going to go back into my route, for example, tube and pipe styles, edit my style, change diameter to three. And so now this particular route should be pulling in the three inch diameter members of these families. Close, finish. And it's going to update accordingly. <laughs> I did that out of order, but um, there you go. Uh, so I'll probably go through because we placed it with a content center part. It doesn't have tube and pipe stuff from there. Um, what we'd want to do from here is create a new route and then connect it through the rest of that. Okay. And so maybe what we do really quickly, then I'm going to go ahead and delete this, delete this route. Yes, please. I'm going to just start over really quickly. Delete route, please. There we go. And we should be under this right style now. Try one more time. Routes. There we go. Yes, really quickly, like so. Go ahead and click OK. And it should populate properly now, I believe. Do the three inch. Perfect. We're going to right click. We're going to go ahead, replace from content center, grab that T fitting one more time. Um, T fittings. There we go. Three inch. Perfect. Perfect, do your thing inventor. And then we're actually gonna add another route to this as well so that we could run it from the other side. Add routes. I think we may have even been able to edit the initial one as well, actually. That might be a good thing to check. Like so, go ahead and click okay. And this should populate as well, okay? And that's how you end up going with these kind of converging pipe pads like so. Um, Again, kind of a kind of a mixture of all those workflows, right? We're both using the tube and pipe tools and also some of the content center tools. So they're not really mutually exclusive even at this point either, even though you do need one for the other. So um, 
Yeah, I'm kind of coming up on time over here, so I'm going to cut it a bit short. Um, I hope that was interesting. Um, there's a few other things that obviously we missed over here. There's a lot to talk about inside of Tubid Pipe. My apologies. Let's uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the questions that we have here in chat as well. <laughs> I'll do my best to answer. Um, Ravi, how to copy tube piping from one assembly to another without link? Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I had mentioned earlier that, you know, these individual tube assemblies, um, these actual routes, these end up as individual parts. Um, the biggest thing I've been told about is specifically just not, um, you know, you're not going to try to do tube and pipe inside of this subassembly of the route itself, right? You don't want, you want to stay in the main assembly to do any tube and pipe changes over here. Um, but you can place this like in a drawing, for example, and just kind of do your ISO drawing off of that, right? Um, so that might be a possibility, I'm not sure. Um, you might be able to just place this assembly in there. I, I would bet it would probably lose some of its intelligence from the main assembly, but I'm not sure about that one. Um, how to add fittings which are not from Content Center, uh, fittings which are downloaded from other CAD files. That's going to be probably involved with authoring and Content Center. Um, yeah, that's that's not. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it would require to add in a completely yeah. different part. Um, you have to author those, add them to Content Center. Since since Tomb Pipe is working strictly from Content Center, correct. Um, yeah. We're going to need to work on an authoring workflow, right, which I think right. Jeff will go over in his webinar. Uh, as well. And then another thing to add to is uh, I know that a lot of questions that I get regarding tube and pipe um, often relate to like, okay, why do I use tube and pipe instead of like plant 3D or why do I use plant 3D instead of tube and pipe? Mm -hmm. So tube and pipe, like, like we mentioned earlier, right, is more of these like small one-off things. Um, if you're trying to do routing for your entire facility or a large portion of your facility, you're going to want to author these components in Inventor, right, your machinery in Inventor bring those things over to plant 3D, you have a lot more flexibility. That is a tool built specifically for that functionality. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. the, that's, if you're curious as to like which one you should use based on like what you do, um, yeah. so there are ones that are ideal for certain workflows. I know that a lot of process plant people are probably on here. Um, mm -hmm. Odds are if you're a process plant person, uh, you're probably going to want to start utilizing something like Plant 3D over this. Totally fair. Yeah. And uh, I, I know like um, there's, there was some mention of like ISOs and like ISOGen specifically, um, which I understand is a type of output for some other, um, uh, I guess, process analysis software and stuff like that. But you can see there's some output for that there too, if you're curious. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, and then uh, Samuel, um, you'd asked if you move one of the flanges, the routing will follow the change. Uh, correct. Yeah, if you, um, yeah, I mean, that, these, these aren't necessarily like true assemblies and that they have constraints to this particular face where I put it at. But if I move this flange in the back to a certain distance, it's going to do its best to update, right? Uh, and that compounds with the actual route sketch itself, which has its own amount of constraints in it, right? That'll, again, try to adjust and change accordingly. Um, this route right over here was actually done with the auto route command. Um, and that also follows that pretty easily and it will try its best to solve itself whenever you move it specifically. Um, yeah, yeah. And you, Burnett, um, is there a good library? Um, I'm not sure about that. Is the, in the content center for sanitary tubing now? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we, we only have the default uh, content center libraries inside of uh, Inventor. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the extent of what's there specifically. So, um, and you're talking about the tubing specifically, right? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's any changes that I've seen specifically for, um, for that um, with tubing and stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all we have there. And uh, I guess just for reference too, if you guys are curious, I could, I could show you guys what libraries I have currently enabled in my project. Um, these should be all the default ones right off the bat, but, um, but oh, well, I guess not. I have a few that weren't enabled over there, but yeah, these are the default ones specifically that are available with the Inventor install. Right? Uh, but yeah, if anyone knows about the sanitary tubing, I, I don't, I'm not aware of any particular changes to the contents in our libraries recently. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how copy design would end up working. I, I was gonna, one of the big things that I, I didn't get to really talk about was uh, tube and pipe and vault and vault workflows. <laughs> um, I, I think that might be a much more involved conversation for sure. And um, 
Absolutely, like Nigel said, we could absolutely take that in Lifeline. So if you guys just send us a case, we could start looking into that with the team as well. Okay. And then uh, Howard Raffington, how would you add a reducer? Um, yeah, as far as the reducers go, um, I mean, there's like reducer flanges inside of the content center specifically, um, unless you're talking about like uh, another type of component outside of the styles that are called out over here. Um, so I think there's even like a, a reducer um, style here somewhere, I believe, I'm not sure. Um, just look at one of these. But um, yeah, I know there's some reducer, reducing components inside of um, Inventor right off, the, right off the bat. So I'm not sure if that'll, that'll do what you need to do. But um, like, uh, let's look at flanges really quick, for example. Um, and we'll do look at the text. Yeah, and they have like the reducing threaded ones over here, for example. So um, if that's specifically what you're looking for, for like custom components that aren't in the defaults, that's a matter of authoring and customizing your content center specifically, okay? Does uh, Plant 3D come with the collection that includes Inventor? Never used it, not sure if I should be. Um, Plan 3D isn't in the product design collection. Is that correct, Nigel? I think it's in it the is. AutoCAD. It is. All the AutoCADs are all the AutoCADs are there except oh, for Civil 3D oh, and okay. uh, Advanced Steel. Right. So Plan 3D is in the AutoCAD with specialized tool sets and the product design collection. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, we have a lot of people who have Inventor to Plant workflows mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. as it's well. Kind of I know. Topic, yeah. Yeah, Jeff did an AVA on that. I don't remember when, but that information exists if you need to bring some stuff into Plant 3D. Absolutely. But um, yeah, a lot of the industrial machinery customers we work with, process plant people, uh, there is a need for that workflow. Correct, yep, 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 yep. Um, and then uh, also from Samuel, we'll reduce the pipeline. Um, you know what, I, I'm not sure, I haven't quite checked. Um, most of the pipes I've done so far, it's only on the single end right here. Um, I will say the tube and pipe styles, they, um, again, part of the authoring includes some of the um, end treatments and like the compatibility with one another, right? And so um, I don't, I'm not sure if I could demonstrate it over here, but depending on what type of, you know, ending and connection you have uh, based on the authoring, they may or may not get along and it'll tell you if it's trying to place something in there. Um, so for example, I could, I think I could even do one of these, for example, let's see if it'll come up over here. And this is the three inch one right here. So I'm going to try to place it and it'll tell you like what's going on with this, right? So this one does not align with the pipe runners too close to the pipe ends. Let's see if it can connect fitting right here. Um, and so this is like a gender and treatment engagement warning, right? And that's, that's largely based inside of the, um, inside of the authoring that engagement stuff and the end treatments and everything. So I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if um, I would imagine you should be able to, um, you know, route three inch pipe off of the three inch side of the flange. I'm not sure though. Um, how does tube and pipe uh, play with iLogic? Oh. The answer is no. Not at all. It's like uh, the same as frame generator, right? Where it like, it's just an environment in Inventor that's built kind of separately than the rest of the UI. Um, yeah. So don't. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, the, the tube and pipe and the, um, and the frame generator environments are, are Kind of interesting because they are dedicated environments and so a lot of these workflows are very specific a lot of the logic and, and you know i guess yeah a lot of the logic is specific to these environments but um yeah i have a guy on the back end that knows all about iLogic that i'm sure would love to know more about that <laughs> um yeah then um so i did and i guess yeah we have one from samuel over here as well uh, well i'm sorry from the other guy about the chat over there um, Rodney, um, you know what? I have a moment actually. If, um, do you think we could keep going, Nigel? Do you mind if I do a quick uh, demo for Rodney there? I, I'm pretty sure we're short on time. Looks like we're at the hour mark. Gotcha. Rodney, um, it, this is being recorded. It'll be uploaded to our YouTube channel sometime in the next week. Perfect. Um, so definitely take a look there. It's not too complicated. There's just a couple of steps you have to do in order yep. um, to get that information. All right. Absolutely. Um, thanks again, Adam, for doing this for us. Definitely was our pleasure. I'm um, joining you this morning for this class. We'll uh, hopefully see you soon yep. for another AVA in the future. I don't have any like witty endings to this. Um, Adam, do you have any last remarks? You know, I just, uh, no. <laughs> <So>. <laughs>